Gubernatorial elections took place in Kogi and by Elsa State over the weekend, this we all know. And even though the elections were marred with violence and rumors of vote buying, the winners have been named. And just two days after the Kogi State elections, and there are already calls for its cancellation. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. The gubernatorial elections of Kogi and Bielsa states, which took place on Saturday, the 16th of November, were rife with rumours and some clips of vote buying and electoral violence. But even though the video evidences of these were displayed on social media, the, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INIC, has named the winners, notwithstanding, in both states. Now, David Eon, as the governor of Bielsa state, and Yahya Belu stays as governor of Kogi state. Now, joining us to... Take a look at how the elections went. I have joining me Babashala Adigui. He's a political analyst. It's good to have you join us. It's a pleasure to and be here. And of again. course, we have Barista Emeka Mwadiuke also joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I'll start with you, Barista. Um, we all watched from afar as the elections unfolded. I remember I was here on Saturday. We, we were, the whole world was watching Bielsa and Kogi State. Let's start with Bielsa. Former President Goodluck Jonathan started by complaining that he was out there early and there was nobody at his polling unit. No security agents, no INEX staff, no cameramen, nobody. He had to go back home and then come back out before he was able to vote. And he complained about some shortfalls. A lot of people would have thought that by now, I mean, INEC was just running, conducting elections in just two states, that we would have bettered on what happened earlier this year when we had the general elections, but that wasn't the case, and one would wonder why. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's, it's quite sad, really, uh, because um, many of us would have thought that um, we got it right to some extent, you know, uh, given um, all the learning that we've done for 20 years now, <laughs> but um, sadly, we'll still see some of these uh, more or less rudimentary uh, issues still coming up about uh, whether the election, you know, the voting materials got to the, the polling units at the right time, whether, you know, the personnel were there, you know, and um, I actually overheard uh, maybe INEC, uh, I think the commissioner also in Bielsa, saying uh, whether they hired bosses, the bosses they didn't turn up, whether they... So, all kinds of uh, excuses, basically. So, but for me, uh, this is not acceptable. Uh, we should have uh, actually overcome some of these uh, uh, challenges, uh, because by now you can't, after 20 years, a 20-year-old man, you can't be calling, saying he's having still having teething uh, problems. So these teething problems should have been uh, overcome by now. So it's uh, quite the, disappointing. Where, where really. do you think the problem is coming from? I think I should ask Baba Shala that problem. If we have a 20-year-old that is still teething or is still having problems that a child or a teenager should have, where do you think the problem is coming from? For Because it looks like Either we've re refused blatantly to all the wheels of change, or we literally don't even know what change is. Well, um, one of the problems is, number one, the system. We cannot rule out the system from the problem of high neck. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I ask myself if we are serious about what we want to do. If we are serious about the election, or it's just a camouflage. Because I can't believe an institution like Hynek that has been conducting elections for the past 20 years has not been able to learn, or maybe it has learned, but has refused to implement what it has learned. You get it? Because I still find it very difficult to understand why logistics should be a problem. Just about a few months ago, you conducted a general election. Just a few months down the line, you are telling us you have a logistic problem that you also had the last time that made you to cancel the election or postpone the election. So if you are telling me now that if the president, the former president, got to his uh, polling unit on that Saturday, as at the time the election was supposed to start, nobody was there 
to conduct that election, it means that something was going wrong or something is going wrong with INEC that INEC has refused to address. Just like a 20 year old boy. If a 20 year old boy refuses to go up, then there must have been a problem. Most likely, the foundation or when he was growing up, the necessary food, the, the nutrient that he needed were, were not provided. So, same with Heineck. Maybe the foundation of Heineck is faulty. And it could be as a result of the electoral process. You know, I always say, is once, they, once people know the loophole in law, there is a high possibility of them to capitalize on that loophole and use it for their own selfish interest. So that's just my home in respect of that. And I'm still trying to scratch my head on this because INEC has never been headed by some pers ordinary person. We have professors. These are well-read people. Even the resident electoral commissioners at the different states are headed by very important people, people who know, I guess, should know their job. So if the system, there is some form of a crack how come these people who we think are smart enough are unable to pinpoint those cracks and seal them up? And like you said, 20 years down the line, we're still complaining about the same issues, we're still dealing with the same issues. Is it, could it be deliberate that maybe this is how the Nigerian system is built to function? Uh, well, deliberate, um, unless we have evidence, we can't really... Uh, well, it's out of curiosity uh, of having yeah, to ask this question. We can't really ha say, you know, for certain. But of course, there could all, all be, uh, always be all kinds of, uh, you know, conspiracy theories. But, uh, of course, you can't rule out uh, sabotage uh, at some point. Um, it might not be uh, from the very uh, high top... How many top times can you, can you be sabotaged? I mean... For every time there's a sabotage, you, for you to even know that it's a sabotage, yes. you, have, you must have pinpointed it and said, oh, this has happened one too many times. Yes. We need to yes. pull the plug on this. But I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can buy the sabotage aspect. Yeah, it, well, the sabotage I talk about is, for instance, people can, uh, politicians can infiltrate uh, INEC and probably use uh, one or two Every of his officials election year. Yeah, to sabotage uh, some areas of maybe where they have... Um, of their weakness, you know, uh, maybe the opponent's area. It's happened before, and uh, it's even happened, uh, you know, pre Bodo, maybe in another dimension of using violence to whittle down the opponent. So, yeah, you can't uh, rule out uh, infiltration of INEC. But again, even uh, at the very um, uh, top level of INEC, um, I've had uh, a respected uh, civil rights person you know, actually express uh, deep disappointment in the in the INEC chairman. You know, as regards how uh, these elections have gone. So, um, yes, you can't equally rule out the fact that the leadership is um, is quite uh, a bit uh, culpable in some of these things. Because at the end of the day, really, the buck has to stop uh, on on the desk of uh, the number one man, and uh, it's either he delivers or he didn't. And uh, in this uh, instance, a lot of questions have been asked. Yes, and we're still waiting for the answers. But let's look at the, the content, contenders in this election. Let's start with Bielsa State. We know that for a long time, a state like Bielsa, states like Aquaibom Rivers have been PDP states. But then uh, David Leon has somewhat decided to put an end to that, even though a lot of people are still questioning how this happened. But hey, he's been named the new, um, well, he emerged winner. He's not the governor yet. Now, a lot of people, I mean, I was reading some newspaper today, and they called him an obscure politician who has ended PDP's long reign in Bielsa. Um, before he contesting this ele election, David was uh, an unknown person in his in the political circles. He just owned a security firm that held no and held no known government position. So it brings to question how this man emerged. And again, if he's never held a political office, how did he get here? And how, will he make a good? Let's 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 
Let's, let's look at him. Let's look at the future with some crystal ball right now. The PDP never saw this coming, of course. Everybody was so sure on the PDP side that the PDP would take Bielsa State as usual. But it looks like the APC was a few steps ahead of the PDP. Let's talk about that. Well, sometimes you don't rely on the hands of God in the destiny of some God people. God is not a politician. Yes, just so we in the destiny of some people, you don't rely on the hands of God. So, number two, I, actually, I wasn't surprised that he won the election because the body language of some of the leaders of PDP was so obvious that they were in support of the APC What do you guy. mean by the body language of some PDP leaders? Can it, we name names? We, we know there were problems before the primaries of the, the before the PDP primaries on why, for example, the former president and some leaders in PDP were not in support of the guy um, the present governor is actually supporting. I think they had a lot of discussion and the guy who still went ahead to say, this is my home candidate. Uh, that's Derry. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, that's the, this is my home candidate. And others felt like, okay, no problem. So they kept quiet. He did not see them coming out to campaign for the PDP. Even when he had his uh, campaign round up last week, they were not there. They were half sent. So we've done that period too, the election process. The APC candidates visited some of them. You get so the body language was so obvious that they were in support of the APC guy because of the disagreement or misunderstanding between the sitting governor and the leaders of the PDP. The man is not known. Let's look at his primaries too. He had the primary, and um, whether it was uh, conducted peacefully or not at all, but he had the primary and he won. Then the next thing is someone within the party, that's the Honorable Lokobiri, or what's his name? Heineken. Yeah. Heineken. Yeah, took him to court at the party that he himself actually won the primary and not him. When the court wanted to, Gave his judgment. The ruling the court gave was APC candidate. There is no candidate for APC. So, <laughs> again, one would question how the APC went from not having a candidate in this election to winning the election. Let's ask the lawyer now. Okay. How does this translate? Because I remember when that story broke, I was live on TV, and the court judgment said, as it is, the APC had no candidate for this election. And here we are, the APC's candidate has emerged the governor. Please explain the legalities and how that works. Uh, well, it's quite simple. Uh, the Federal High Court uh, in uh, Yanagua, I believe, uh, gave the uh, ruling on the application, on the, uh, yes, the application or the suit brought by Senator Heineken, Heineken you know. And uh, that was to the effect that Heineken was saying, declare me. The court ended up saying there was no valid uh, primaries. That I can't even declare anyone. So effectively, the party has no candidate. But then again, of course, you, they appealed. They appealed the, uh, the, the ruling. Mm -hmm. And the court of appeal now uh, reinstated the, the, the party. That was actually how they got on the ballot. Uh, even though Heineck was saying that even that notwithstanding, the fact that it was the, the, the gentleman, you know, um, Leon, Leon that, that the court said don't put anybody on the, on the ballot. So it wasn't, the other wasn't directed at the party. So at any rate, they would have stayed put APC on the ballot. I well, Annex said they would still go ahead yes, with they what still they had have gone on the ballot. At, at any rate, they printed the ballot the unless ballot. they would have postponed the election and started to. But effectively, yes, because again, there's also the jurisprudence that um, even from the by the Supreme Court that the votes are for a party and not for a candidate. So at the end of the day, um, the, the party will then sort itself out. But um, of course, if they proceeded, the effect would also be that if the court eventually invalidates the candidate, obviously, whatever result you declare, it would have probably created um, another pro legal tussle or legal uh, crisis. Because you would then have 
a party that has won, but a candidate that has uh, been uh, disqualified by the court. So that how that would be sorted out. But presently, uh, the matter is still on on appeal. So. However, the court decides. Does this not complicate the whole electoral issue? I, I'm not a lawyer, but this sounds very, you know, it's too confusing for the average person to, to, to understand. It's saying, oh, well, it's not necessarily against the party. Uh, well, the party can still be on the ballot, but, mm -hmm. but then when they are announcing the results, yes. it's the name of the candidate that is used to announce the result. Sure. Is the court also not confusing us here? Because I'm, I'm a bit confused. If the party needs to go back home and put its house together, yes. then you cannot have anybody being declared a governor in waiting. Yes. But that's what we're having right now. Um, I think that that problem was solved when um, the Court of Appeal uh, ruled that the, the, the both because what effectively what the Court of Appeal ruled was that both the candidate and the party should be reinstated. So presently there's no crisis. So the only time we have a crisis is when we proceed and probably court says the party don't have a candidate or both candidates are disqualified. And now you have a candidate has already been declared. Or probably at that point, maybe uh, the, 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 then uh, we'll have a situation where the PDP may be declared. Because if you now have, uh, uh, if that judgment of the, the ruling of the Federal High Court is upheld, maybe mm -hmm. whether at the Supreme Court, obviously the candidates will be invalidated. And then it will be a case of uh, who's, in, who's next. And uh, probably uh, PDP may sneak in, but so presently... Should, should we be keeping our fingers crossed on this one, or we should just see it as a done deal? Well, I want to say it as a done deal, because the Court of Appeal has already given the ruling, and um, by reinstating both the party and the candidate. The only thing that can make it more complex, if the, um, the other guy, the, sen the senator, mm -hmm. felt that, no, I still want to go ahead with this ruling by going to the Supreme Court. And from what I heard from him last week, I doubt if we want to go ahead with that, because actually he was not happy with the judgment. He was not in support of the judgment because he asked what I, what I took to court is totally different from what the court, the ruling the court gave to us. So you guys, that is a game you want to play, let us go ahead. I'm not interested in the case again. So I read that. So I don't think you want to go ahead. And if it goes ahead, then, <laughs> what happened to Zanfara might likely happen. Let's talk about the politics of states and the, the, the economic politics of states. Now we know that states like Bielsa and Rivers are very important to the powers that be, whoever is at the center. Now, a lot of people would have thought that it would have been difficult to snatch PD, uh, um, Bielsa from the PDP, but now it's a done deal. Uh, and then, of course, the power at the center would be having an, a feather to its cap. But so what happens to those states that used to be PDP states? Of course, they have, they're down by one state. What happens to the politics of the South-South? I'll start with you. Uh, okay, it would have been, it would have been okay to say that maybe the APC now has a foothold in the South-South. But they already have that with Tedo, notwithstanding the crisis, which may still turn one way or the other. Uh, so uh, that said, um, it's, it's a, a major win for, for the APC. Um, again, with the help of uh, the former president, it, it probably has to be said. Um, so well, I, I mean, if you say that, then it means he was anti-party he was an anti party because you're saying with the help, did he help them? Are you saying he voted against his party? If he did not help them, why was he the first person in APC party went to visit in America? Well, he is a former president and he is the biggest man, in quote, in that part of the world. And he lost his unit, fully unit, his world, local government? No, seriously, <laughs> um, because even if you look at. Um, I think it was obvious that uh, whether by body language, whether by visit to the villa, whether by... Does this know, mean that the PDP might be suing 
or trying to kick the former president off for anti-party politics. I'm just saying, because there have been cases where people have been butted out because of anti-party politics. You can't, you, can't, you can't rule it out. You can't rule it out. And at the same time, uh, are we so sure is not the understanding of the former leader and PDP national body as a whole. So you think that, that all hands are on deck on this one? Yes. I'm guessing, I'm, 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 uh, I, I mean, if, if... I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't align with that, that the top leadership of the party will uh, probably agree with the, the former president to more or less undermine his party. Uh, but, you know, what I think is uh, probably more of a personal, he felt a personal slight because the understanding actually was that he was rooting for Timia Laibe, uh, but that, you know, uh, the, the governor was rooting for this uh, gentleman, Diri. And uh, obviously they couldn't agree uh, because even Diri was a former commissioner under uh, pre former President Jonathan. So ordinarily he should be his, uh, but obviously the disagreement was deep rooted. Uh, for him to not back because he never campaigned for PDP, which was probably the first time he, he, he was doing that. And, um, you know, also um, you see a situation where, because even uh, during the APC, uh, the, the mega, their mega rally, they, 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 they made all kinds of, uh, you know, statements saying that he was more or less with them. They specifically even mentioned, yes, the, the chairman, Oshio Mole, even specifically, mentioned him and uh, probably thanked him, you know, for whatever. Then uh, I think it was Akwabio that said there was one big man that, you know, he said uh, he's giving his goodwill, but he doesn't want to mention him. So the handwriting was uh, obviously so on, the, the on the wall. if the NWC of the PDP is not necessarily in on this, then we're looking at a PDP versus Jonathan drama coming up soon. What? Is the PDP bold enough to do that? That's that's the that's, that's the, the question that's that we we billion, wait to see naira if we can. Okay, well, I want to say thank you to you guys, Babashala Degui, political analyst, and Mekan Wadi, legal practitioner. They're not going anywhere because we're going to look at the violence and and the vote buying and all of the negativities that somewhat shadowed the elections over the weekend. And when we come back, uh, a major observer group has called for a total cancellation of the Koki state governorship election. Stay with us. We'll be right back.